Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome to part nine on a series where I show you how to build a simple modern habit tracker called consistency. So in the last video, we basically set up our Postgres database and set up some queries to save users to that database upon registration, which is great. But I also introduced one other issue that comes up upon registration, which is basically if we register and refresh the page, we basically get signed out because the logged in user in the Redux state gets set to null. So basically I have two main goals for this video. Number one, we're gonna set up local storage to allow our users information to get persisted in the browser and not disappear upon refresh. And number two, we're gonna quickly set up the front end for signing in. I know we've been on this whole registration sign-in process for quite a few parts of this series now, but trust me, the stuff that we're building out is gonna help us a lot when we get back to the goals and habits stuff because we have the database set up and because we know how to write our queries, those things will come a lot easier. So let's start with local storage. First of all, what is it? So local storage is basically a method of storing key value pairs directly in your browser. So if you go to your developer tools, which the shortcut for, by the way, is command option I on Mac, and you go to your application tab, you'll see local storage as an option under storage. And if you go to localhost, you'll see that you can store key value pairs here. So essentially whatever data is stored in here will be persistent throughout the user's browser. So even if they refresh, this information will stay here. Now there are some alternatives to this, such as session storage and cookies, but essentially I'm going with local storage because it retains the user's information in the browser even after they close their tab, which is kind of a convenient feature that I wanna personally have for the site. If you wanna do something different, you can go ahead and use session storage or cookies and read more about that if you want to. Okay, so implementing this is actually pretty easy. Let's open up the user slice file on the front end and basically after we're done with the API call for registering, we just need to put one line in here and that's gonna be local storage dot set item. And now what key do we wanna store? It'll be called user info. And the value that we wanna associate with this is response dot data. But here's the thing, we can't directly store response dot data because this is an object. And in local storage, we need to store a string. So we're gonna use JSON dot stringify to turn our response.data, which is an object, into a string. So let's save this, hit register one more time, and see what's inside local storage in the browser console. All right, I just hit register, and within local storage, we can see that we have user info set to the data that the backend returned. So let's refresh, and the thing is, it still signs us out because we didn't directly change what the value of logged in user was in Redux. So let's do that now. So let's go to the top of user slice and initially our logged in user is null. Let's change this a little bit because we know that it could either be null or it needs to be whatever information is stored inside of local storage, right? So let's set const user info string equal to local storage dot get item. And now we wanna get whatever item has the string, has the key, sorry, user info. And now this constant has whatever's being stored inside of local storage with this key. Let's do one more thing because we know that this thing could either have some value in it or it may not. So I'm gonna set another constant called current user info equal to user info string. And I'm gonna use a ternary operator here. So if this thing has some value within it, then we can say json.parse this value. Because remember this thing is a string and we wanna get the actual JSON object from that string. But if that thing is undefined, null or empty, we're just gonna return null. And now instead of logged in user in the initial state being null, we're gonna set it to current user info. All right, let's save this and have a look. So now I can see that the logged in user within Redux actually has the information when before it was just null. And the reason it's not bringing us to the habits page right now is because we didn't implement the redirect code on the sign in URL. But if I just manually go to slash habits here, we can see that it allows us to stay at this page. And if we refresh, it keeps us here as well because the data is being persisted within Redux and within local storage. Okay, so that basically checks off this first step here. Let's move on to setting up the front end for signing in. All right, so if you guys have been following along with this series, you know the drill. First, let's add the route for signing in. And that's gonna be in the app.js file. Let's copy this route down change this URL to sign in and the component that it's gonna to point to is sign in. And to import that, we can drag this line down, change register to sign in once again. And now, as you know, when we're creating a front end feature, we need to make the React component for it. And if we need to write the Redux state for it. 
So I'm going to start with the React component. We can save this file, close it for now. And to make our lives a little easier, I'm just going to copy what we have in the register folder and paste it into the sign in folder because the UI and the logic is pretty much the same and we just need to change some stuff around. So let's change this export to sign in, close this file. And now this register file, we can actually rename to sign in because we're going to repurpose this for signing in. Now, I don't want to show you guys the next few minutes of me copy pasting stuff and changing words around. So basically in this file, I'm going to change these registers to sign in, remove some of the form fields that we don't need, and I'll get back to you guys. All right, so real quick, here's what I've done. First of all, I made sure the name of the component is sign in. And then everywhere we had register state, I changed to sign in, remove some fields. So now we only have email and password and change some of the text down here to say, if you don't have an account yet, you can register at this URL. So if you've done those, you should be good for the component. Now let's go into the Redux state for users. And we want to add some Redux functionality in here for signing in. And again, this is very, very similar to what we're doing for register. So I'm going to copy this down, change this thunk action creator to sign in everywhere here. I'll use command D to multi cursor select. There we go. And now some of you might be thinking if we're just copy pasting all this stuff down, why not just reuse the same thunk action creator as we use for registering? Uh, the reason for that is because I don't want the state for registering and signing in to be dependent on one another. In other words, I don't want them to be sharing a state because I tried that and I actually ran into a bunch of bugs with signing in and registering. If you want, you can try it, see if it works for you, but I'm going to keep the logic for signing in and registering separate. So now that we have this action that's going to call our API for signing in, the other thing that we haven't done yet is add the sign in state to our initial state. So literally, I'm just going to copy this line down and change this to sign in and that should be good. Now, remember, once we dispatch this sign in user thunk action creator, we need to handle the loading error and success dates of this API request. So similar to what we did, actually exactly what we did for registering, I'm going to highlight these extra reducers for registering and also just copy these down and change register to sign in. Just select all these change it like this and it should be good. Let's save it and check out the browser. All right, so this is what the UI looks like. Nothing crazy. Let's make sure the Redux is set up correctly. So in the user state, we can see we have sign in and the loading and error are set to their initial states. Now let's go back to the code for a sec. I want to make sure that this API request for signing in actually gets called and that the backend returns some data. So to test that real quick, I'm going to go in the backend folder in the server.js file. Actually, let's go into user routes because this is where we're storing all the routes for user logic. And let's write a very basic endpoint for signing in. So let's say router.post slash sign in. Now let's write our handler function. It's going to take a request, a response, and it's going to do some stuff in here. I'm just going to set const test user to an object that has a name. And I'm just going to say res.send test user. Again, this is just to see if the front end hits the API correctly, because in the next video, we're going to be building this out further. Hit save and let's try signing in. Hit sign in and we can see that the logged in user is set to this test user that the backend just returned. But obviously we haven't done any input validation or any error checking for that. So that's going to be the content of the next video. I get that some of this stuff might be repetitive, but it's all good. Repetition helps you practice and make sure you have a better idea of what you're doing. Now, I am trying to keep this video kind of short. I got a 40% midterm on algorithms this week, so pray that that goes well for me. But yeah, that chucks off step number two. If you stuck around all the way to the end, thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys may have gotten some takeaways from this part and this series. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next part. Bye.